Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Awake Nation News for Friday, January the 19th, 2024. I'm David Zublick. And I'm Penelope Shepard for the Awake Nation News. We've got the scoop. Please join us on YouTube at the Awake Nation News. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Here are some of our headlines. Donald Trump's lawyer screwed up. E. Jean Carroll case attorney. Uh, so that's who he is. He's the E. G. Carroll case attorney. I was like, where's the rest of it? A lawyer who withdrew from Donald Trump's legal battle against E. G. Carroll screwed up the case. A separate attorney has said. Um, judge dismisses damages claim against Donald Trump over police officers' debt. But other elements of the January 6th lawsuit against the form, former president will go ahead. Meet the woman vying to be Donald Trump's pick for vice president. The former president says he likes the concept of having a female running mate if he wins the Republican nomination for November's election. Everyone is speculating who will he pick. Kristen Noeem, the South Dakota governor, and I really like her too, is a hot tip to be Trump's running mate in November. So we don't know what's what's going to happen with that. Rand Paul fires back at Sununo for a mocking Never Nikki campaign. Senator Rand Paul on Thursday fended off criticism from New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu after he mocked Paul for his campaign against the former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley and said nobody cares what the Kentucky senator has to say. And here's another story, which I found kind of interesting. It's actually an opinion story. Joe Biden needs to fire somebody ASAP. President Biden needs to himself. fire somebody. How about right? himself? <laughs> yes, please fire yourself immediately. <laughs> President Biden needs to fire somebody, anybody, to show voters he understands they're angry about his administration's innumerable cock-ups and that he is angry too. Additionally, U.S. Naval officer sentenced to two years in prison over spying or China, when Exile 26 pled guilty in October to passing sensitive military information to Chinese intelligence officer. And this this is a weird story. I don't I don't reckon we're going to get to this today. But Biden wins the GOP <laughs> Iowa caucus. Now he has to beat Donald Trump, the rival he helped pick. Invoking Hitler isn't helping. And oh. other headlines are. Hezbollah commander killed in Israeli airstrike in Lebanon. This was January 8th. Wissam Hassan Tawil was assassinated in southern Lebanon as Anthony Blinken met Middle Eastern leaders in an attempt to stop the Hamas-Israel war from escalating. David? All right. Uh, Joe Tacopina and his two partners, Chad Siegel and Matthew DiOrio, withdrew from a damages trial that is following on from a civil ruling against former President Donald Trump last year. A New York City jury awarded E. Jean Carroll, a journalist, $5 million in damages in May, ruling that Trump had sexually assaulted her and was liable for defamation. They also withdrew from a case in which he is accused of falsifying business records over a uh, hush money payment to former adult film star Stormy Daniels to keep an alleged affair secret during the 2016 campaign. Trump has pled not guilty to 34 felony counts, and he is separately involved in other legal Battles. Tacopina filed a declaration requesting the withdrawal of his firm's representation in the Carroll case on Monday, also requesting that Judge Lewis Kaplan allow his partners to withdraw their services. While the reason for their exit isn't yet clear, Tacopina has been criticized over his legal skills and the way he ran the case. I respectfully submit this declaration in support of. Tacopina Siegel and Diorio's motion. Wow, what an interesting last name. Yes. Bugsy Siegel? Yeah, yeah, that's another one. Uh, made pursuant to local civil rule 27.1 to withdraw as counsel and including TSD attorneys Joseph Tacopina, Chad D. Siegel, and Matthew G. Diorio, no relation to the cookies, for Trump with such other and further relief as the court deems just and proper, Tacopina wrote in. Well, you know what, though? I know Trump said that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, I'm sure, yes. 
<laughs> He'll be throwing cookies at the wall instead of ketchup. He didn't yeah. exactly <laughs> know with you. All right. He didn't exactly specify a legal or factual basis to withdraw in his filing. Newsweek contacted his firm and representative for Trump by email to comment on the story. Speaking about the news on MSNBC's The Beat, another lawyer who once represented the Republican, Tim Parlatore, criticized Takapino's legal skills, specifically referring to the Carroll case. He's essentially been on the shelf ever since he screwed up the first Gene Carroll case, Pelletori said. He's very good at self-publicity, but not actually very good in the courtroom. And I think that that's something that we all saw during the Gene Carroll case. It's something that I warned them repeatedly, do not bring this guy in at all. I think he barely cross-examined Gene Carroll, he added. He didn't call the witnesses that they had prepared, and obviously was put in a bad position because they didn't really do much, you know, good work in the discovery of that case. But here's a guy that probably hasn't tried a case in over 10 years, oh, coming Lord. in cold and barely cross-examining a witness. He added that it is widely thought he's not a very competent attorney. Newsweek has also asked representatives for Takapina by email to comment on these remarks. Meanwhile, Trump was mocked by political commentators on social media over the loss of his legal representation. Experts said the departures could be a problem for the GOP frontrunner with his former attorney, Michael Cohen, telling Newsweek Donald's outcome remains bleak. Does it? Ain't buying it. Ain't buying it. Judge dismisses damages claim against Donald Trump over police officer's death. The federal judge in Washington has dismissed a claim of wrongful death brought against Donald Trump by the partner of police officer Brian Sicknick, who died after the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol three years ago. Judge Emmett Mehta ruled that Sicknick's long-term partner, Sandra Garza, did not have the legal standing to bring this claim against the former president because she was not his wife. Not saying that she was not the wife of the president, but she was not right, Sicknick's right. wife. Just to be clear. However, the judge has allowed a separate claim in Garza's lawsuit against Trump and two men who assaulted Sicknick outside the Capitol in 2021 to go ahead. Garza is seeking 10 million. And this is like a free for all. Let's just lunch on Trump. Trump. Let's know. just have lunch on Trump. 10 million in damages from each of the three men. Sicknick, 42, died the day after the riot when Trump supporters stormed the Capitol in a last ditch bid to block Congress from certifying Joe Biden's victory in the 2020 presidential election. The police officer was pepper sprayed during the attack. He suffered two strokes the following day and later died. More than 100 police officers were injured in the riot. Four officers took their own lives in the weeks that followed. In her civil lawsuit, Garza alleged that Trump bore responsibility for her partner's death, accusing the former president of inciting the violence. She has said that she holds Trump 100% uh, responsible for the riot and that he needs to be in prison for his role in the assault. What do you want to bet she's a Democrat, David? Oh, yeah, yeah. Garza also sued Trump supporters Julian Cahader, who admitted pepper spraying Sicknick, and George Tanios, who brought bought the spray. Cahader was jailed for more than six years in 2023 after pleading guilty to assaulting police officers. Tanios pleaded guilty to lesser charges and was sentenced to time served. Ruling in Washington, Meta said that Garzi, Garza did not meet the legal definition of a domestic partner, despite the couple's long-term relationship. Garza, therefore, cannot recover the damages that she personally seeks under the act, Meta wrote. Garza is also suing Trump, Cahader, and Tanios over an alleged conspiracy to interfere with civil rights. That part of the lawsuit remains active, and Garza's lawyer, Mark Zahid, said, that they're considering summon, summoning the former president to be deposed in the case, like he hasn't been in court enough. No. Uh, we are pleased to see that our lawsuit in pursuit of justice for the late Capitol officer, police officer Brian Sicknick has been permitted to continue. We are now considering our next options to include deposing former President Trump. Trump faces a string of criminal and civil cases stemming from the January 6th riot as he campaigns to take back the White House, including federal charges due to go to trial in March. Trump has claimed that as president, he had immunity for his actions. Jack Smith, the special prosecutor who has brought charges against Trump, 
has urged a federal appeals court to reject the former president's immunity defense. The court will hear arguments from the two sides next week. Garza has said that she and Sicknick were Trump supporters before the riot. He knew that Brian was devoted to him and he did not once reach out to me. He didn't even send a letter of condolences, she told CBS News in 2021, he did absolutely nothing. Separately, Trump has appealed a ruling by Maine's Secretary of State barring him from the state's 2024 ballot over his role in the Capitol riots, contending she had no authority and that he incited already no been overturned, by the way. That's already been overturned, right? Yes. Never swore to support the Constitution and was not a government officer as stipulated in the constitutional amendment she cited. Trump whose front-running Republican candidacy could be threatened, appealed the decision by Democratic Sheena Bellows, who became the first Secretary of State in history to bar someone from running for the presidency under the rarely used Section 3 of the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. That provision prohibits those who engage in insurrection from holding office. The former president is expected to soon appeal a similar ban by the Colorado Supreme Court. That appeal would go to the U.S. Supreme Court while Bellow's action is being appealed to a Maine Superior Court. I believe that's uh, that's it. Yeah. Well, who is going to be Donald Trump's running mate? Many are speculating that it's going to be this very, very competent governor. The, I like her. Yeah, there was standing room only at the... Uh, country Celebration Center is almost 400 Iowans turned out for a Donald Trump event without Donald Trump. They'd come for the speaker, Christy Nome, the South Dakota governor, who's not only a well-known surrogate for the former president, but a hot tip to be his running mate if he wins the nomination. The 52-year-old Nome would be a popular choice in Iowa to join Trump's ticket because she represents a neighboring farming state. She could also appeal to Midwestern voters in swing states such as Michigan and Pennsylvania, which will be crucial to the general election outcome in November. The two-term Republican governor is one of a handful of women who have been talked of as potential partners for Trump's run. Another outspoken Georgia congresswoman, Marjorie Taylor Greene, appeared at a rally on the other side of the state the following night, where she set out her own credentials while stumping for the former president. The number one target in both their speeches was a third woman who may be forcing her way into consideration by Trump, especially if he has to deal with his smooth way to the nomination. Nikki Haley, the former South Carolina governor who's running her own presidential campaign and appears to be gaining ground. Yeah, with I would say Haley, no. <laughs> now, I, I, I Haley don't see comment. that. I don't see that happening. Noam had sharp words about the 51-year-old Haley during her appearance in Sioux City in the northwest of the state. I've had people ask me about why I'm not here campaigning for Nikki Haley, she said. I've heard so many different versions of Nikki Haley and met so many different versions of Nikki Haley. I don't know who she is. When she was governor, she said she was not going to support raising the gas tax and then introduced and passed one of the largest gas tax increases that there ever was. Uh, she said China was our friend and we should Is be invited <laughs> to invest in the country and build new partnerships with them. Now she's decided that China is our enemy. She said that she was never going to run for president against President Trump. And now she's running for president against President Trump. She defends him, then she attacks him. Whichever way the political winds blow is where she goes. And we cannot trust our country to somebody like that. Noam, a staunch advocate of gun rights, reminded her audience of a number of her own achievements in her speech, such as South Dakota's record low unemployment. Of, uh, that's only 1.8%. That's awesome. Last summer and its fiscal success without a state tax. She told Newsmax TV in September that if Trump asked her to be his running mate, she would do it in a heartbeat. Noam told the same channel last week that it would be a mistake for Trump to pick Haley after reports that he was sounding out allies about this idea. If he picked her, I would tell him I disagreed with him, but then I would support the ticket because he's still the president and the president still makes the decision. After watching Noam's speech, Cindy Piper, 63, a Trump volunteer in Iowa and 
retired teacher, said she could see Noah Miss Trump's running mate. I'm a grandmother, too. What she said about grandmas, once you have a grandchild that your blood turns to steel, that's true. She's smart. She's personable. She's a hard worker. Compared to poor little Kamala Harris, she's way above and beyond that. Piper thought Taylor Green was a little rough around the edges for the VP role. You have to have a certain amount of diplomacy. Okay. I like people that are just straight up and forward. I think Marjorie Taylor Green is great, but probably not vice presidential material. In her speech to a couple of hundred people in the southeastern Iowa town of Kilkook, Taylor Green, a conspiracy theorist who has advanced the QAnon belief that a cabal of high powered child abusers is opposed to Trump's return. He's right about that. He's also, right about that. Haley, she can't <laughs> wait to go to war with everybody, Taylor Green 49 said. She's a neocon. She's a bush in heels. Let me tell you, it's not that pretty. Under President Trump, we had world peace. That was true. She later told her audience, I just found out today that Nikki Haley was in New Hampshire. And she said that in New Hampshire, they're going to have to correct what Iowa does. Wow. So what does she think about Iowa? And what does she think about Iowans? She's already looking down on y'all. Trump was asked by NBC News in September if he was leaning towards choosing a woman as his running mate. He said, I like the concept, but we're going to pick the best person. But I do like the concept. Yes, he said. Other names that have been mentioned include Sarah Huckabee Sanders, 41, his former White House press secretary, who is governor of Arkansas, and Elise Stefanik, 39, the senior New York congresswoman who served on Trump's impeachment defense team and gained attention last month when she put three female college presidents on the spot over anti-Semitism on campus, resulting in the resignations of two, the heads of Harvard and Pennsylvania universities. Carrie Lake, 54, a former Arizona TV anchor who has never conceded defeat despite losing the Arizona governor's race in 2022, appears to rule herself out in October by announcing a run for Senate. Two male names also regularly feature in speculation. Tim Scott, 58, the only black Republican senator who pitched for the presidential nomination but dropped out in October. And J.D. Vance, 39, the author of the best-selling memoir, Hill Billy Elegy, who became a senator for Ohio in the 22 midterm elections with Trump's endorsement. Be interesting to see what happens. I do like Christy Noem a lot. I think she yeah. brings a lot to the table with what she's done for her state. I do too. Rand Paul fires back at Sununu for mocking Never Nikki campaign. Never Nikki. That they were saying never Trump, right? Well, right. 10 million people viewed my opinion line. So I believe this is Sarah Fortinsky speaking about it. it says, uh, Senator Rand Paul on Thursday fended off criticism from New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu after he mocked Paul for his campaign against former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley and said, no, and he said, nobody cares what the Kentucky Senator has to say. So he says, well, over 10 million people viewed my opinion online, and that's a few people. The governor of New Hampshire has less followers online than a small town mayor in Kentucky, Paul said in an interview on Newsmax's National Report. So, you know, you can compare objectively the reach of my endorsement and the reach of his endorsement, but 10 million people viewed it on social media, he continued. Sununu endorsed Haley's presidential bid, of course, and has been campaigning with the former South Carolina governor in his home state of New Hampshire and elsewhere. Haley has enjoyed a slight bump nationally in national polling in recent weeks, but she's performed exceptionally well in New Hampshire which holds its primary next week. That's concerning to me, knowing what we know about Sununu. Yeah. According to the Hill Decision Desk, HQ's average of New Hampshire polls, Trump leads Haley by less than 10 percentage points, with 44.4% supporting Trump and 34.7% supporting Haley. Nationally, Trump still leads by a wide margin in hypothetical polls on the GOP primary, with 62.2% support for Trump, and 12.4% support for Haley. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis follows with 10.5%. These are very minuscule percentages. Yeah, very Paul, much. in the interview, also doubled down on his anti-Haley position. No Haley comments, stressing the fundamental policy differences he has with Haley, and in particular, on foreign policy matters. And, you know, she's just like, 
she's waffling on pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, one second. So, and I'm just telling my opinion. And the honest to God's truth is that I think Nikki Haley represents the McConnell Dick Cheney wing of the party. Ow, wow, wow. Paul said, adding that this is a battle that's gone on in the Republican Party for a long time between the neocons and the Liberty wing. Paul described Haley's wing of the party as those who think that we should always be involved and there's no limit to military spending and intervention. That, again, is extremely frightening. We think that that's naive, expensive, bankrupts us, and actually ultimately makes us weaker, Paul said, about those in his anti-foreign intervention wing of the party. That's the Nikki Haley wing of the party. And I'm dead set, and I'm a never Nikki. Paul's comments come after Sununu in an interview last week responding to Paul's anti-Haley efforts sharply criticized the Kentucky senator. I'm sorry, but nobody cares what Rand Paul thinks in this race. This race is in Iowa and in New Hampshire. It is in South Carolina. She's the only candidate that's surging. We've made it effectively a one-on-one -on -one race at this point between Nikki and Donald Trump, Sununu said. That's pretty hysterical. Um, knowing what we know about the state of New Hampshire and its intrepid corruption. So with all due respect to the senator, you know, maybe when the U.S. Senate actually starts doing something and actually starts delivering some results, they can stand on a soapbox and think that their words matter. But until then, sorry, Rand Paul, nobody cares. Wow, how disrespectful. Now, speaking of, uh, you mentioned uh, the um, uh, Nikki Haley being from the, Dick Cheney part yes. of wing of the Republican Party. Whatever happened to the uh, the story that Liz Cheney was going to run against Trump independently? Remember oh my that? God, who would vote for her? I think nobody she, would. I, but she no, she didn't it. even she she threatened to do it, but she hasn't. Yes. She the whole the whole Cheney family. I think they related to Lon Cheney. The, <laughs> yeah. horror, because well, the horror that they're perpetrating on this. Country. Wasn't it Dick that shot somebody? He shot somebody. Yes, he did uh, on a little hunting trip. But anyway, all right. Now, the, here's an op ed piece uh, by somebody named Liz Peak. Uh, says Joe Biden needs to fire somebody ASAP. And let's see who Liz is referring to. President Biden needs to fire somebody, anybody, or oh, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> fire somebody to show voters he understands that they're angry about his administration's innumerable cock-ups and that he is angry too. When a president's approval rating in his historic uh, uh, Iowa, uh, historic lows while he's running for re-election, he has to do something. Whining to the press that they are misrepresenting your success is and sounds Pathetic. The country is appalled at the way things are going and decidedly unenthusiastic about giving Biden four more years. Four more years. One of the president's biggest problems is his age. Biden seems frail, despite Jill Biden's uh, unconvincing testimony and timorous. Escalating aggression from our enemies is no surprise. We see Biden as weak. And so do they. If Biden runs against former President Trump, as is expected, the contrast will be stark. A word cloud described the former president <laughs> would include arrogant and unpredictable, but it would also include strong. Don't expect that adjective in Biden's word cloud. Firing one of his top officials could help make Biden look more forceful and decisive. Finding a worthy candidate is not challenging. <laughs> First up, I was just going to say, as God is my witness, even before I came to this paragraph, <laughs> I was going to say, how about Karine Jean-Pierre, the president? <laughs> she is a catastrophe. White House spokesperson who is by turns surly and uninformed, offering a little but an often incoherent version of what has been written down in her infamous binder. The White House has clearly seen the light. National Security spokesman John Kirby now regularly adds some heft to the podium. The administration should bite the bullet and let her go. <laughs> Can the White House fire a black gay immigrant woman? Has she introduced herself at the press corps? Yes. With the country beginning to push back on the insidious diversity, equity, and inclusion imperative, it is the perfect time for Biden to show that he is brave enough 
to let a diversity hire go. That will never no, happen. <laughs> uh, no. The most obvious cabinet candidate cabinet candidate for the axe is Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Yes. I know where Republicans deemed immigration the number one issue, even ranking it above the economy. Americans are horrified that millions of people have entered the nation illegally during the Biden presidency and have been allowed to stay. Biden's team is half-heartedly blaming Republicans for not taking up the president's immigration reform proposal, which he announced on day one of his administration, as if the U.S. Citizenship Act of 2021 would magically solve the problem. It would not. House Republicans have threatened to impeach Mighty Orcas for willfully refusing to maintain operational control of the border as required by the Secure Fence Act of 2006. Section 2A of the Secure Fence Act of 2006 defines operational control as the prevention of all unlawful entries into the United States, including entries by terrorists, other unlawful aliens, instruments of terrorism, narcotics, and other contraband. Mayorkas told Congress under oath in 2022 oh, that he had complied with that act. God. That clearly was untrue. A former immigration official, Robert Law, wrote uh, at the time, quote, this definition was read out loud to Mayorkas before his response, making it all the more remarkable <laughs> that he claims to have fulfilled that edict. That's Biden's crazy. approval rating on the border is just 18%. I'm surprised it's that high in a right. recent ABC poll. Someone's head should roll. I just lost you. You're muted. <laughs> I'm going to continue reading. Somehow you got muted. I'm sorry. No, I'm so, I, I, I am sorry. sorry <laughs> Someone's that. head should roll, and it's not yours. <laughs> Someone's head should roll. Biden could, could find. <laughs> sorry about that. Lloyd. Why did that? Oh, I see why. Never mind. Biden should also fire or could also fire Lloyd Austin, the defense secretary, a lifelong military man, went AWOL recently, failing to tell anyone that he was in the intensive care unit of Walter Reed Hospital because of complications from prostate surgery. He didn't tell Biden for his number two or his number two, a number a woman named Kathleen Hicks, that he was ill. He went to great lengths to conceal his illness, even having his aide ask the ambulance that took him to the hospital to turn off their lights and sirens. Oh <laughs> the secrecy, which went on for five days, was a monstrous, monstrous dereliction of duty. Austin is our top military man. The night before he vanished, we engaged with and killed Houthi terrorists for the first time, shooting up some small boats. Every you. <laughs> This just sounds like a, uh, I don't know. A bad um, movie. He's not my battleship. Wah. Remember the old battleship? From it's not my battleship. Wah. The little kid's game. Uh, we engaged with and killed Houthi terrorists for the first time, shooting up some small boats. Every day, U.S. personnel are coming under attack for Austin to ignore the chain of command and for Biden to not have any communication with his defense chief for several days is not acceptable. Several Republicans have demanded that Austin resign. It would be far better for Biden to insist on it. <laughs> um, what else we got here? There's more. There's also a good case to fire Janet Yellen. Our Secretary of Treasury has gotten nearly every big issue wrong and is playing political cheerleader as opposed to honest overseer of our financial health. She's chased international tax agreements that do not benefit U.S. companies, crafted an agreement with our allies to cap the price of Russian oil that completely flopped and claimed the economy was reeling when Biden took office. Similarly untrue is Yellen's claim the Bidenomics is working for the middle class, as she recently wrote in a Wall Street Journal op-ed. Meanwhile, she actually denied that the Biden White House eased sanctions on Iran, though others have admitted as much. How does Yellen explain the 37% rise in Iran's foreign currency reserves since Biden took office? Other candidates abound. There's Jake Sullivan, who cheerfully noted that the Middle East is quieter than it has been in two decades. 
just oh before the October God. 7th attack. Uh, <laughs> or maybe the president could fire both Sullivan and Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who together oversaw the disastrous pullout from Afghanistan and decided we should no longer consider the Houthis a terrorist organization. <laughs> the embattled president must act after the raucous Trump years. Many have celebrated the stability of the Biden White House, but stability is no substitute for competence. And that takes us to the end of the newscast. We were just out of time. But this this is a spot-on op-ed piece. <laughs> I say Biden should start by firing himself. Um, he just because, he would have to remember that he was actually engaged in the office of the presidency in order to fire himself. That's true. And but he can fire himself, pardon himself, and go. You, you remember himself. Trump's whole whole thing, right? Trump's uh the apprentice. You're fired. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. That's gonna do it for this edition of the Awake News, Awake Nation News. We post it Monday through Friday by 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central, right here on our YouTube channel, The Awake Nation News, and on our website, theawakenation.com. Please also join us Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern, for The Awake Nation television show on our Rumble channel, the David Zublick channel, and again, also at theawakenation.com. That is going to do it for today's edition. We are out of news, so we're out of here. Have a great weekend. Zublick out. Shepherd out.